Sam Roberts. How are you, buddy? I'm great. Thank you for having me. And I was thinking about, you know, because I got my 200th podcast coming up, and I was thinking last night about this show, and you and Bully as well are, are, are some of the people that can really understand building a show like this and having a wrestling show that has the kind of consistency that, like, this show does and the, and the amazing growth that you guys have had. Because, you know, I was around years and years ago when Busted Open was first starting, and the yeah. fact that it's become what it's become is, is it's amazing to see. I just love seeing what a big important wrestling show this is and sam when you say amazing growth do you mean that like dreamers on the show sometimes <laughs> <laughs> well they did have to expand the studio i heard that's just a rumor though yeah. i don't know no. wow. okay wow <laughs> what we say about tommy dreamer when he's not here in studio but this is actually something that that joey understands too when you start something organically and you start something small and it just becomes bigger and bigger over the years and with buzz and like now you having sellout shows and People, you know, looking forward to your event even bigger than some of the other stuff that's going on. You can kind of relate to that as well. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's uh, I call it it's the snowball effect. You know, uh, it's just a snowball going downhill, and uh, eventually you'll cause an avalanche if you work hard at it. Yeah, I remember when Joey was doing the type of stuff, kind of the type of stuff that he's doing now. But he was doing it behind a pink mask, so nobody knew it was him doing it. <laughs> I, <laughs> smartened up. <laughs> I hated those days. I was like, when are you going to take this costume off of me? <laughs> he was the star man. Star man. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, and listen, we talk about, listen, Busted Open is going to be celebrating 10 years uh, in, Unbelievable. In, in, in April of 2019. And you're celebrating your 200th show that's coming up August 16th. Yes, August 16th, SummerSlam week. That's a week from tomorrow. So it's next Thursday at Caroline's. We're doing it live for the people just because, you know, I mean, you guys have all been on the show, actually. Uh, Bully, Joey, you, you know, you've all been a, a big part of Sam Roberts Wrestling Podcast. Um, a week from Thursday, we're going to be at Caroline's. Renee Young is going to be there. Pat McAfee is going to be there. Bruce Pritchard is going to be there. Dalton Castle is going to be there. Um, and yeah, we're going to we're going to switch the show from Sam Roberts Wrestling Podcast officially to not Sam Wrestling. Uh, we're going to do the whole show in front of an audience and everything. It's going to be a, a blast. You can go to Caroline's dot com and get tickets. Thursday, nine thirty p.m. New York City. This is big. So you're changing the name of the podcast. Yes, we're changing. We're we're going over to not Sam Wrestling. You know, I, I I'm 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 having maybe delusions of grandeur, but visions of a of a bigger wrestling content space that I think needs a a a brand associated with it. I've had I've had not Sam and not Sam dot com for a long time. I want to extend that into not Sam Wrestling, and and that's what it'll be history. It'll be history next Thursday night. So you're thinking of maybe branching out a little bit? A little or, bit. Or, or maybe ha accepting something into the brand as that's well? That's right. That's right. Everything coming in and going out. That's how <laughs> That's how babies are made. That's how content is made. You go in, you go out. You go in, you go out. You know? Dave, Dave you getting this? Are you writing it down? Yes, yes. In, out, in, out, in, out. I get yeah. it. I get hey, it. Sam. Yeah. Sam, let me ask you a question. Did yeah. you watch Raw this week? I did, of course. Okay, did you see Heyman's promo? Yes. If you were putting it together a top five oh, power God. ranking, would you include Paul, Paul Heyman's promo in those power rankings? Yeah, I mean, I put, honestly, I would put it number one. Oh, my God. Because, And I'll tell you why. It was because not only because of how important and powerful the promo was, it was it, especially when you have the number one promo that people are talking about at a, for a match that honestly most people are complaining about, Paul Heyman turns it into something that everybody's talking about, and just the the detail, the fact that he he was unshaven, the fact that his hair wasn't slicked back. You know, you could see in the HD the detail of like he was he was just slightly unkempt, not to a cartoony extent, but just the tie was a little loose, the hair wasn't uh, slicked back. There was there was he was unshaven, he was red faced, he was it was something that. Everybody's talking about it. I agree with you, Sam, but don't fall into Bully's trap because what Bully's trying to do, and nothing is more uncomfortable when you're a guest at somebody's house mm -hmm. and you're having dinner and the parents 
are arguing. Right. That's exactly what Bully is trying to do. There's been an ongoing argument I, I between said Bully a word. and I. No, I wait a second. Not wait said a second. A word. The, yes, you did. You asked, asked him about him what we were arguing wait a about minute. just before Joey and Sam came into arguing. the studio. I did not know you were arguing. Bully asked me my You're opinion. bringing up a topic, knowing that it's going to make me angry, and knowing that I'm going to start to scream and yell. You brought it up. I didn't bring it up, Bully. You brought oh, it calm up. Calm down, Sam Bully. We have Ro- guests. Sam Roberts. We have guests been in doing studio. doing a wrestling podcast. I've been a guest on his podcast he's yep. a friend of our show we're a friend of his show yep. we all jack each other off on our <laughs> shows okay all i was doing was trying to get his opinion he's a guy that works with wwe he's got his show all i was asking him is if he would include paul Heyman on his top five he said yes i did not say anything else after that there is no trap set i'm not even going to follow up i don't even have to follow it up Thank you, Sam. I appreciate your answer. I appreciate you asking my opinion. All right, Sam, in the 200 shows, and we're yeah. going to be celebrating 200. No, 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 no. Now let's bury Dave. <laughs> in the 200 shows that you've done, what's yeah. probably been the most memorable of those shows? Well, uh, multiple fabulous Bully Ray interviews. I would <laughs> yeah, say. Stop, stop Sam. <laughs> the Joey Janela episode was a classic. Um, <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, kind sir. <laughs> You know, I don't know. I, I probably pretty early on, uh, Roman Reigns was on the show. Mm, it was right after his Royal Rumble win that really started to build the mm-hmm. Roman Reigns heat. And that was when he was saying stuff like, whether the fans boo me or cheer me, you know, I'm still buying a new house or something like that. And that was the first interview that really got people fired up. And that's when I realized, like, oh boy. This can have uh, the the words that come out of this thing can have an impact. It's not just hey, I'm getting to know these wrestlers yeah. and and you're along for the ride. It's okay. Some of this stuff becomes newsworthy. newsworthy. People care. Um. So that was probably that was pretty memorable in terms of it being a wake up call and a big moment for the show. Uh, something that Bully and I and, and and Joey, you're a huge part of this as well. I remember last year, uh, Sam, when you had me on your show, and it was it was just before SummerSlam, mm-hmm. and I actually said that I thought that 2017 was one of the best years in pro wrestling, and I remember saying, I can't wait to see what happens in 2018, and here we are in 2018, and Joey, you're looking at Lost in New York that's taking place on the 17th, and you're close to a sellout. Uh, we have All In that sold out in 30 minutes in Chicago. We have... The G1 Supercard that's taking place with Ring of Honor in New Japan at Madison Square Garden. I mean, I- am I wrong here, or could 2018 be probably the healthiest that this business has ever been? Pro wrestling's fucking weird in 2018. <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Joey? Because you're the one who's who's really uh, trying to scrap together a living, right, and doing kind of an amazing job at it. Yeah. I, there was a time when you wouldn't be able to kind of make the name for yourself that you have promoting your own shows oh absolutely not it's just i think it's just the day and age of social media and uh just uh i don't know it's it's a whole different dimension when it comes to uh, professional wrestling um everything's accessible just by typing in a few words on the internet uh, even the bad stuff as we're learning with some wrestlers but you know with the good comes some bad and um it's just uh 2018 is definitely the weirdest year um but when you look back at it, maybe 20 years from now, you're going to be like, that's one of the years that changed the business. That's the year that entered uh, professional wrestling into that next boom period. That's that's just my opinion, and I feel like we're definitely heading towards a boom period. I don't know about ratings or anything with the WWE. I, I know the ratings are not as good as they used to be or what they want, but I feel like that doesn't even matter anymore. It's more of a internet age, and people are accessing the product through uh, streaming services and and internet platforms. And when you're getting a billion dollars for a TV show, it's yeah. hard to say that the TV isn't successful, <laughs> no, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> right, Sam Roberts still in the house. And again, next week as we get closer to SummerSlam, his 200th show, August 16th at 9.30 at Caroline's here in New York City. You definitely want to be a part of that historic show. And again, a brand change for Sam Roberts as well. So this is going to be a lot of fun come August 16th at 9.30. Yeah, Thursday night, August 16th, 9.30. And did you hear that lineup? Pat McAfee, new star of NXT. I love Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee, Renee Young, 
Bruce, 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 Bruce Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard. Dalton Castle. Bully, you've got experience with Dalton Castle, right? My peacock is bigger than his. <laughs> That's what I've heard. And Bruce Pritchard <laughs> does have the number two podcast in wrestling. It's number two. To which, which Sam is, Roberts. I love that Hello. answer. Love that answer. Hello. I love that. You said it. I love, <laughs> I'll let you he say gave me it. a look like, what's number one? <laughs> which one is Dave? Which which show is number one? Oh. Hey Sam, let me ask you a question. When you're there at when you're there at WWE during the pay per views, do you have any interaction with Roman? Sure. I mean, you know, uh hellos, goodbyes. Yeah, sure. yeah, I talked to Roman a little bit. How his how is his overall demeanor backstage. And by the way, I'm not putting you in a bad position with this question. This is very legitimate because I would be giving these answers if I had them. How do you feel his overall demeanor is backstage? Good good, good frame of ma- mind, bad frame of mind. Does this stuff in the ring get to him? No, I think I think there was a time in his life where it might have, but I think he's he just understands what it is because he has a good frame of mind. He, he's... he's his head is up, his chin is up, like he's 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 ready for whatever. He conducts himself. He feels like a top guy when he's walking around, like a locker room top guy. Like and 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 it's not sort of like, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do out there. Like there's a confidence about him. Um and and a position where he's like, Look, I'm I it is what it is, but I'm gonna try to make this work. So uh I doesn't feel when I'm around him anyway, like this is getting to him. You know, I think he's aware. But I think he's also aware that his job is to deal with it and move forward. And, you know, he, that, that's what he's there to do. As a fan mm-hmm. with this match, even if the Money in the Bank briefcase were to come into place, at the end of Monday Night Raw following SummerSlam, who do you want to see the, be the Universal Champion? Brock. On, you know, and... and, and, and I'm ready for it not to be Brock in the sense that I'm ready for the universal title to be in play. I don't think that the universal title has, we've never had a, a, a sort of good guy, proper universal title run ever since the inception of the title. It, the one sort of in play champion was Kevin Owens. And that was a very heel. I'm sneaking away with the yep. title run. So there's never really been a true face of the universal championship. And I think that the title has been hurt because it hasn't, really gotten a chance to establish itself because of the way you know it's been defended but all that said you know i i i want brock to continue on this run that he's on i like that the acknowledgement that the fans are getting fed up with brock i like the acknowledgement that that they don't like him um i like brock without paul Heyman. i don't know if it's going to stay that way but i like the idea that brock is such a villain that he's not even around paul Heyman anymore they're they're kind of the same way when Nakamura turned heel, they changed his music so that people couldn't sing along. I feel like Brock is going to come to the ring without Paul Heyman so that he doesn't even have that thing that fans will cheer. Hold on one second. You just said Brock Lesnar and villain. Do you truly look at Brock Lesnar as a villain right now? Yeah, I mean, as of last week on Raw, I look at Brock Lesnar as a villain. I, I look at, yes, as of as of last week, as of the Raw, the magazine Raw, where Brock Lesnar was sitting in the back reading magazines. Yes. That was the Raw that, to me, as a fan, I felt like the message is clear, Brock is a villain. Now, I think that they're in a really odd spot because what WWE has done, in my opinion, is establish Brock Lesnar as a villain, but I think that the Roman Reigns fatigue is such that no matter how villainous you make Brock Lesnar, it won't result in cheers for Roman Reigns, and you're really dealing with an issue where you might have a fan reaction that's even worse than WrestleMania's, in the sense that both guys are just, we don't like either of these guys. But wait a minute, to your point, they made him such a villain last week when he manhandled Heyman that at the end of the segment, they were chanting for Roman. Yes, and, and, and I heard that, and I made note of it. Some people said it was Strowman. It sounded like Roman it's to me. It was, it was definitely Roman. Roman. It was not Strowman. Yeah, and and I was like, when I heard that, I went, that's interesting. Now, you could tell in the tonality of the chant, and we're getting really inside wrestling, but that's the point of this show, I think, that it was definitely a women and children chanting thing. It wasn't a, a bassy, you know, grown man chant, so it wasn't like he had shifted the opinion of people it was more like the haters kind of shut their mouths and we really heard 
the Roman fans for one of the first times. That said, I don't think that they will be as as uh, uh, audible in Brooklyn. Yeah, it gets, it's a big difference between Florida, which is Roman's home state, and being in Brooklyn, New York City for SummerSlam. Yeah, and I also think that it's one thing, like that was in response to that angle, which I thought was great. I mean, some people on Twitter were thinking that I was crazy for saying that was the best ending in Raw, of Raw in a long time. I thought that was an incredible ending. I didn't see it coming. The you know the Paul Heyman part specifically, I was like, this is this is really kind of masterful in this moment for what it is. Um, but I think that that once we're separated from that specific moment, that the reality of this match is happening again is what Brooklyn is going to be reacting to. Changing gears real quick. G1 Supercard, Ring of Honor, New Japan, Madison Square Garden. What are your thoughts? It's amazing. I, I love the idea that another company is running Madison Square Garden. You know, I think it's a really interesting time for Ring of Honor because I feel like if they sell this place out because tickets have not gone on sale for it yet uh, correct? for honor club members they went on sale at 10 o'clock this morning okay and we don't know any numbers obviously not yet, yet right no. so i think it'll be really interesting to see what the numbers are because this is even more than all in this seats a lot of people uh matches haven't been announced i think the new japan inclusion is important but i think it's got the same thing with all in where if this works i don't think that this means okay now ring of honor is a big deal. I think it means like, okay, if Ring of Honor and New Japan put their forces together at the right place at the right time, they can do something special. I still think that the promotions need to come together and figure out what they can do to make this a regular occurrence. It's just that for me, Sam, is that that we're getting 10,000 fans in Chicago September 1st and the possibility of a sellout at the Madison Square Garden for something other than the WWE. If if I told you that a year ago, you would have thought I was crazy. I would have scoffed, Dave. You would scoffed. Have. Think about that. First of all, three months ago, if I said somebody outside the WWE would have ran the Garden, you would have thought the same thing. Never going to happen. But Never yeah, here we happen. are, which and, and it's happening. To me, is is an historic milestone unto itself. It definitely is. It definitely is. Yeah, I think it's really really cool. And again, another milestone is what's taking place next week. Two hundred show. For Sam Roberts. That's a great point. Sam Roberts Wrestling Podcast, 200th episode at Caroline's. You can get tickets, by the way, at carolines.com. Um, we're also going to have uh, the same day, um, we're going to have an announcement coming soon. Follow me, not Sam Wrestling, on Instagram. I just opened the account. You guys, the Busted Open Nation, are the first people to hear about it. Follow that account, and there'll be an announcement about a SiriusXM listener event that week as well. 